The area of the silver treasure from the village of Galish, Vrahan region, has been inhabited by human societies since prehistoric times. In the area of Yambal there are traces of a settlement that existed during the early period of the Copper Stone Age. And in Prapora there was a settlement from the late period of the same era, Mikov. Versus. 1933, page 235. Traces of a similar settlement can also be found south of the monastery well. An early Bronze Age settlement and necropolis were discovered around the Pakata Spring. Clay burial urns from cremation burials and household items were found. Nikolov, B. Early Bronze Age. 1982, page 196. Ob. 2. There was a settlement from the Late Bronze Age around the Obreton Spring and in the Pishtovar Padina area. A bronze dagger tip and an original bronze axe decorated with geometric ornaments came from here. Nikolov, B. Archaeology, 1964, Number 2, page 70, OBR. 3. Extremely rich cultural monuments were left by the Thracians in the region of Gallus. Nine Thracian settlements inhabited by Thracian societies during different historical eras have been established. The largest in terms of area is the Thracian settlement, which covers the center of present-day Galish from Starata Cheshma and Parka to the east to Pishurata. This settlement was probably inhabited without significant interruptions from the Bronze to the late Roman era. Mikov, v. 1933, page 39. In the late Roman era, there was a Thracian sanctuary dedicated to the god Dionysus near the springs. Ceramics. A bronze statuette of Old Strong and the upper half of a marble votive slab with an image of the god Dionysus were discovered. Nikolov, B. I. A. I. 1967, page 219, OBR. 4 and 5. Two necropolises are also known from the same time. One of them is on the territory of today's Galish, and the other, in the area of Prapora, opposite the railway. Stop. Burials of Thracian warriors were discovered in them, along with their weapons, Nikolov, B. I. A. I., 1965, page 186, OBR. 27. Separate Thracian burials were found in the northeastern high part of Gallus. The remains of other Thracian settlements were excavated in the localities Dupliaka, Yotkova Trpka, Karamalov Geranium, Penyashka Trpka, Suntina Babka, and Tevo Drivo. See Nikolov. B. Galish vs. Drevnost. Vratsa, 1962, 40p. Groups of several Thracian burial mounds were erected around all these settlements. It is evident that the region of Gallus was a major Thracian center before the Roman invasion. These nearly 40 Thracian burial mounds were erected next to the Thracian settlements and also to the places where there were estates of the Thracian landowning aristocracy. The silver treasure from the village of Galish still keeps the secret of its exact origin and purpose. It is a unique piece of work most likely by a local craftsman or by several craftsmen.
The images of a woman on one of the objects found and of a horseman on another of them suggest their use not only as ornaments, but also as religious symbols of fertility and victory in battles. Its dating is around the 2nd century BC. The objects are round, slightly convex appliques, phalari, which were probably used for attachment and decoration. Some suggest for breastplates. There are also theories about some horse ornaments for rich Thracians. The treasure from Galish was discovered in 1918 by Ganka Neshkova, somewhere mentioned as Sanka, in the area of Glodjetsa or Chukata near the village of Vratsa. The circumstances of the find are not very clear. Grandma Ganka says that after a heavy rain, she collected 24 silver objects with gold decoration dug up from the downpour. Unfortunately, she immediately gave away 10 of them to her relatives, who sold them to ring dealers, according to their stories, and the mayor of Galish only managed to send the remaining 14 to Sophia. A great horde of Thracian warriors but then none of the Sophia specialists visit the site. Two of the phalari have divine images of a woman symbolizing the goddess of fertility and of a Thracian horseman. The woman's hairstyle is interesting. She has two flowing braids, different from the way Thracian women usually wore themselves. The rest of the phalari have floral decorations, and some of the elements are also found on other Thracian treasures, including the Rogozin one. Scientists suggest that the treasure was buried either during the Celtic invasions or later, during the Roman ones. Today, we can only guess what other finds there were around Galish which may have long been found and melted down or exported abroad. After all, until the liberation, and even after, it was usual to unregulated excavation of old settlements and sale of the found finds. No security, no museums and regulated archaeological research. And precisely in the 18th-19th centuries in Western Europe, interest in ancient works of art arose and the foundations of modern archaeology were laid. We will probably never know what part of the treasures found in Bulgarian lands adorn private collections and museums all over the world. It is also possible that the vessels from Galicia were not remelted by goldsmiths at the beginning of the 20th century, but were sold. Finds around Gallus testify to a highly developed Thracian settlement with burial mounds, which managed to survive even during the conquest by the Roman Empire. The interesting thing is that the village of Galish has had this name since at least the late Middle Ages and has never changed it, nor has it changed its location, under the Thracians, the Romans. During the First and Second Bulgarian Kingdoms, in the Ottoman Empire and in modern Bulgaria. Today. The original of the treasure from Galish is exhibited in the National Archaeological Museum in Sofia, and there is a copy of it in the Regional History Museum in Vratsa.